Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dementors YouTube channel and you're watching the Learning Bootstrap series and this video is the extension or the part 2 of adding header and navbot with the bootstrap. In this video we're just going to see some of the left out components of the navbot. So I'm just going to go to the same place, the component section of a bootstrap documentation. We can just going to go to the navbar section in that. So we've implemented this. In this video, I'm just going to implement and show you how you can add a drop down. We can go here. This is where the drop down is actually implemented. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to copy this <laughs> to that web mentors drop down. I'm just going to say that I'm just going to different things in here link one and I'm going to just create it multiple times sorry about that so here it is a divider so y you have to keep remembering this divider uh, divider can be used in any place so divider is not specifically for navbar uh, you can use it uh, outside the navbar as well anyway we will be using it in the website that we're going to create in this so don't worry I'll be explaining you clearly on that so we have done this and let's see how it looks in our website so we have added it WDM drop down link 1 link 2 link 3 that is the changes I've made so just made sure that uh, this is working and this drop down needs JavaScript for your information so uh, let me show you it needs jQuery actually and uh, I'm just going to remove this jQuery this drop down needs jQuery and uh, bootstrap.js so it's not going to work if you're not going to do that so I'll show you uh, we're gonna just remove the JavaScript or the jQuery I'm just going to reload it and uh, we're just going to check it there's little bootstrap JavaScript requires jQuery so this is what I've said to you if the jQuery is not there you'd be getting an error in the console area so you don't have to worry about it I'm clicking on it multiple times and it's not working and it's not going to work because we're not having jQuery so that's very clear now I'm going back I'm just going to put it back now I'm going to remove bootstrap.bin.js now I'm going to refresh it I'm going to see it you're not going to see any errors because it's not completely necessary but you cannot use drop down again so you need this both jQuery and bootstrap.min.js the JavaScript bootstrap to make it work so there's a lot of things that going to work I'm going to refresh it and now it's going to work see so you need jQuery and uh, bootstrap JavaScript in order to make it work so this one and for information I have to show you something so you're seeing this now I am using bootstrap for responsive web building so what happens if I reduce the size of the screen reduce the size of the screen it goes down of course but what happens when I reduce it further so we would change a uh, mobile device action so it's not going to change it's not going to change but when here it comes see this is the same place where we've seen multiple links and also a search text box and also a button in here and two elements at the end but now as we entered into the smaller devices entirely hidden every elements of the nav bar and put it inside this so this can be done so that uh, you don't have to worry about it this is a very good feature you can use in bootstrap that makes a lot of things easy for you so again you can just reduce it as much as necessary it's just going to align itself and make it look good but again this needs jQuery this need bootstrap.min.js or bootstrap.js and uh, you cannot make it work without those two files okay uh, let's implement it let's try it I'm just going to do this and what it that is this it's just going to put it down so I don't want that kind of things happening in my website where it should be responsive so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the responsive navigation bar so this is the part we didn't use actually so we just directly use this but I haven't used navbar header or everything else so in here the collapse navbar collapse everything is added so what happens is that anything within this tag will be gone when you reduce it to a certain level 
so this makes it to hide uh, the elements of the navigation bar when you reduce the size of the screen or when you use your mobile phone and this makes sure that it's going to show that particular icon that you have seen when the screen size is reduced and you press that icon all those navigation items get listed so now I'm just going to add this before the UL actually we have this okay so I'm not having any problem with adding it here but again let's first see collapse now bar collapse okay this now bar header is where we're using but again I'm having container fluid now bar header is used in here so I'm just gonna change it with this okay W D M now bar collapse one I'm just gonna do this it comes back because we removed the right so this itself makes a difference see and it's this is the breakpoint where it enters the size of a desktop so it got into this but when we reduce it it's going to get vanished good now which makes this this works now I have to make sure that this code is added to my okay now just going to refresh it and it's not going to have any kind of impact don't worry about that we haven't added this, these buttons this button is the factor that's going to have a part so you can see three dashes that is what it denotes span class icon bar span so if you want four you can use four another one so I'm just going to use it don't worry uh, I'm just going to include this button element now very important thing that you have to look into it is this so we're just going to put it above and uh, we made sure that this is going to be used and now I have to change it to WDM because this is where it is okay so this data target should target this so if you use example in here and WDM in here it's not going to work so we have to change this it has to be exactly same as this so that it opens visible so don't worry about it so as I said I'm just going to include another one to have four of this so now I'm going in here refresh it and I'm seeing this but I don't want four I'm just want to keep it simple I just want two just going to do this and I'm refreshing it I'm having only two now I put it full it just comes in now again uh, there's nothing wrong if you have it at the right side so don't for don't be worried that it might not be working with the right it's just going to work the same as it does just going to do this so it's going to work now you can do this see so this is the special feature of navbar header of it so there's a lot of things that you can use with this and I have already shown you uh, you can inverse the color you can also have custom colors but that is different breadcrumbs are totally different so I'll cover that later so this is the end of this uh, video we have covered a couple of things in here we've added the responsiveness to the header navigation bar and uh, just you know refresh it and check it so it's pressed it's unpressed this state is going to be saved so now I'm doing this and I'm going to do this and now I'm pressed it I'm just going to open it I'm going to close it it's press state is remembered so again now we've added this drop down stuff and we have added this responsiveness to the menu so this is the thing that we have covered in this and also we've covered the inverse color concept and a couple of things that you have to keep in mind so thank you for watching this video and if you have any kind of comments or issues or problems or errors that occurs when you do this or you have any kind of suggestions uh, you think will help us you can share it with us uh, in the comment section of this video and uh, try to implement this in your HTML file so that you can remember this and uh, keep watching this series and learn bootstrap